Hey, uh, how is your uh, new BMW coming along? Uh, are you excited for your Z4? <laughs> Sorry, but I, I've been kind of annoyed the last couple of days where, with people messaging me this type of things, trying to be funny. Yes, there is a big controversy, if we may say so, regarding the new Supra when it was revealed and a lot of people, people realized that it's basically a copy of a Z4. So, in this video I'm going to explain to you my take on it, why people need to chill out, and basically why this car is perfect for me and what my plans are going to be. Starting with with everyone nagging about that it's going to be a Z4, or actually not even nagging, but being so surprised. If you are a petrol head, and I mean because a lot of people fuel their arguments by saying like, how can this happen? Why is this not a, like an individual car? I'm such a petrol head, I'm such a fan of a brand and of all the cars and whatnot. Well, if you're a petrol head, unless you are 10 years old, you, then you should know that Way back in 2012, Toyota and BMW announced a partnership together, that they're going to work together on a car. Five years ago, so two years after that, the FT1 concept was released, which was going supposed to be the new Supra. And a lot of people kind of start confirming there were rumors and speculations that that is the car that BMW and Toyota are going to be working on. And most recently, like let's say uh, two years ago, when the prototype started to appear at the Nürburgring, and if you are following this channel, then you should know. If not, then you should still kind of maybe know if you are interested that the car was always, the Supra was always present at BMW M Test Center. So BMW was clearly developing the car for Toyota. So there is absolutely nothing to be surprised about. And this is something that really annoys me that now something that has been like official revealed and even the CEO of Toyota at the announcement said it's known as the worst kept secret of the automotive industry. The new Toyota Supra, also known as the worst kept secret in the industry because everyone knew already what the car is going to be and how it's going to look like. On top of that, uh, let's take some other comparisons. The McLaren F1, probably the best supercar ever made, has a BMW engine. Nobody's complaining about that. But it's an amazing high performance from Formula One and whatnot. Yes. Okay, let's take another example. Ford Focus RS, one of the best five-cylinder sounding engines. It's from a Volvo. Nobody's complaining about that. Then if we look at another collaboration of Toyota with Subaru, Subaru engine in the GT86, one of the best driving sports cars. It has won multiple, multiple awards from various journalists, from Jeremy Clarkson, from Evo Magazine, being the best sports car of the year. No one is complaining about that, only apart from the fact that it has too little horsepower, that it needs roughly 100 horsepower more. Guess how many Supra has? Roughly 100 horsepower more. So, it, I understand, everyone uh, wants to have their own opinion and also like people who are really fan of the brand, they have valid arguments, for example, that the Supra should have been more like a GT, not like a sports car. Uh, can a GT be a sports car? Yes, but it's then less suitable for a track. You have like sporty elements on the road, but on the track it's very heavy. So Supra probably should have been made on a platform of a BMW 8 series, the current 8 series. Big, massive, heavy, luxury, but at the same time like an M8 for example, it's going to be fast. I think this is uh, something that would satisfy a lot of people, but yeah, it's not the way it is, and the way it went, the way it is now, it is, for me personally, perfect. Now I'm going to explain to you why. First of all, let's start with the engine, biggest like complaint and surprise. It is an amazing engine, derived from a B58, or maybe it is a B58 engine that we can find in a BMW M240 or 140, producing between 330 horsepower, which is the case of the Supra, up to 380 something plus horsepower, which is the case of a Z4, and in a tuned version, 450, 
maybe even more if you reinforce some things or add some things here and there. Yeah, it is a great engine. I'm happy with that. You know why? Because for example, when the GTR, when we talk about, if we talk about JDM, GTR, the current R35 has been released with the VR38 DTT. It took a while, even up until this day, when we started seeing like big horsepower numbers because the first two years or even three years or more are being like R&D. Tuners need to see what type of engine is this. Okay, we can increase the boost here slightly. How does this work? You need to crack the ECU because again, when the car was released, the GTR, the ECU seemed to be uncrackable um, and it took a while until it got going. Now with the Supra, this engine, we knew it for years. So everyone has all the magic ready to give it more life, more power, more everything. So it's great. And then in regarding to all the chassis components, again, it's copy of BMW because Jay Lopnik crawled under the car at the motor show and they saw that it's pretty much the suspension components and a lot of everything else is also again BMW, which is again for me by living and being at the Nürburgring is great because if I take a curbstone wrong and I dent like uh, some, I don't know, uh, some trailing arm or whatnot. I just go to my neighbor and say, hey, do you have this for me? Yes, buy one, get five for free because my backyard is full of BMW crap. Please get rid of it. So it is amazing in my case. Again, why is it also amazing? Why am I happy that it's not a GT, but a sports car? Because if you drive the track, you know the best upgrade you can do to your car is get rid of weight. So weight is your enemy. And if it would be a GT car, it would be heavy. You could still make it light, but not as light as a really designed sports car. For example, when we look again at the GTR, which is a GT car, biggest issue is overheating of the brakes, overheating of the gearbox and a lot of other issues and also massive, massive costs, maintenance costs because you go through your brake pads like, like crazy because the car is just way too heavy. In case of a Supra being a lightweight car, it is perfect. It's great. It is an amazing base. And speaking of performance number, 0 to 100, 4.1 with the current numbers of 330 something horsepower and the weight of roughly 1500 kilograms. That's great. Imagine adding 150 something horsepower to it, minus 200 kilograms. It is going to be an amazing track beat, beater beast. I am very excited for it. So that's why it is a perfect car for what is being built for. In according to today's standards. Now, is there something that uh, I'm unhappy about? Well, I'm kind of unhappy about the design. The overall design structure is okay, but there's one thing missing and they actually did the same what BMW does. There is no wing. And what am I talking about? Well, when you look at the M2 or the M4, they, they come like the base model with no, with no wings. And then after like five years, there is a M4 GTS or a M2 competition with performance pack with a wing. And a wing is very important because of downforce and because it looks great because everybody loves wings, right? When you look at it, it definitely misses it. There have been some renders related to old generation combined with the new Supra and it looks just absolutely fabulous. But I guess again, like with BMW, we will have to wait and see when there's going to be a GR version, Gazoo Racing version, and there's going to be like less weight, more aero, and who knows, maybe a different engine. Maybe they are gonna fit an M4 engine like they did with the M2, because first M2 was just a single turbo or something, meh, and then after that they finally put an M4 engine into it and then the, everyone said this is how the car was supposed to be so we'll probably have to wait five years and then everybody's gonna say well this is how the supra was supposed to be but by then i hope my supra is going to be also this is how the supra is supposed to be and moving on uh, to my actual purchase i hope now you understand why i'm very happy about it and now let's talk about the plans with the car so first of all, at the order, you can choose from three different models. So now I'm gonna talk about the spec. There is a base model where you get pretty much everything. There's a premium version where you get some extras and there is a 90 limited edition version where you get also some special extras, but they're mostly like aesthetics to show you that you have like a special limited edition. So I have pretty big dilemma here because for me, I actually, if I could, I would just buy a car without seats, on steel wheels, and without brakes, without anything, because everything will be replaced. So uh, yeah, you already know where I'm heading to. But however, 
The premium version has leather interior, 12 speaker system, which I don't care about, extra weight, extra whatnot, but it has a heads up display, which I kind of like, but again, it's extra weight, so I probably can live without it. A90 has amazing frozen matte gray color. I think that's how it's called. It looks fantastic, fabulous. This is something I would like. And again, just having a limited edition car is great, but the things that I'm going to do to it is going to make its value drop massively probably. So it makes no sense. So there are a couple of things from separate editions that I want, but I might end up going for a, a base model. I would definitely apply for a premium edition, but probably by the time this video gets released, and my application will be reviewed by Toyota and they're gonna see this video, they're gonna be like, you don't need it, we're gonna give it to someone else. We're gonna keep it in the garage and sell it on for $500,000 in 20 years. I don't know about the spec, I don't care. Because the most important thing is, what is going to happen with the car? Well, pretty much obvious. I live and work at the Nürburgring, I buy a car to drive out the Nürburgring, so what are you gonna do? You're gonna drive a stock car? No, not at all. So what are we going to do? Hmm. Well, to be honest, the sky's the limit. Well, in this case, my wallet and sometimes imagination is the limit, but you know where I'm heading to. So the base things is a club sport package. So it's going to get bucket seats, lightweight bucket seats. I don't need the leather comfort things. It's going to get hopefully different steering wheels. Speaking of the steering wheel, the A90 edition, I am not a fan of having a color steering wheel partially because it's kind of distracting on the track. So that's another reason why I would not want to. Probably some people are gonna say like, oh, you're not allowed to get different steering wheel because of the airbag uh, rules and whatnot. And so maybe I will not do it. But most importantly, suspension, exhaust, chip tuning, brakes, tires, of course, wheels, TE37s. Oh, I'm excited for that. Maybe BBS, E88, who knows? Uh, no, probably TE37. Hard to decide. Um, what else do we have? Wing, hopefully we need to wait until someone will like manufacture a wing for that car, which is going to be TUV approved as well. Um, some kinematic upgrades, so you know where I'm getting by saying the word kinematics probably. And who knows, and lots of other things. Get rid of all the interior, make it a, a very exciting track tool. Maybe a wide body, who knows, Probably not at the beginning, but maybe later. Maybe I can drive VLN or RCN with it, races. So maybe it's going to become an actual race car. Who knows? Again, the sky is the limit, the imagination is the limit. There's a lot of things. And finally, the question that everyone wants to know, including myself, when am I getting the car? Well, back in the time in October when I placed the order, there were speculations and rumors that deliveries would take place somewhere June, July. But now, according to like journalists, it's going to be somewhere in October this year. Whether it's July or October, it means it's going to be end of the season. So unless the Nürburgring is going to stay open the whole winter, as long as the weather is permitting, is going to be a winter project, which is not a bad thing because in the winter you always have like a lack of content. So it's going to be like a winter project build. And by the summer, we're going to have like a fully built car more or less, and then we can take it out. I guess this is pretty much it. What I had to say on the topic regarding the new Supra and my plans with it. I hope you understand why I'm happy, uh, the way it turned out and my decision, why the car is perfect for me and my environment. You don't have to agree with me because again, if you say no, it should have been like on the eight series and like developed uh, its own engine, a three JZ. And if it would have costed 150,000 euros, it would have been fine because you know, if you need to develop something from a ground up, the actual costs gonna increase. Um, so now you have a very uh, affordable car for depending the price in Germany it's starting from 62,000 euros in Holland 82 in the US I think $50,000 it's something very very good and nice yeah well I guess that's it if you have any additional questions feel free to ask them if you disagree and say that I'm an idiot feel free to say so um, but in general if you do like it and you want to stay tuned to how this whole project and thing gonna evolve uh, make sure to subscribe like share you know how it is hit the notification bell button and uh, whatnot uh, and um, you know what it is no as long as you enjoy the videos that's the most important thing thanks for watching and see you next time bye bye